Okay, let's take a look at our problem for this video. We're going to factor this, or I would like you to factor this. And I'm using the word this because I'm not going to fully explain this problem just uh, quite yet. So uh, if you want to pause the video and work on it, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the solution, the answer key here. For those of you who are kind of uh, in a rush, and then uh, for those of you who want to stick around uh, for more of a thorough explanation, you know, on what to do and how to handle these type of problems, then you could stick around to listen to me talk mathematics. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and I have an outstanding math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. But basically, I do all things mathematics from uh, middle school, high school, and college mathematics. Uh, so if you need help in your current math course, I can definitely help you out. Uh, if you are studying for a, a particular exam that has math on it, so for example would be the GED, the SAT, the ACT, the ASVAB, Accuplace, or Alex, and maybe a teacher certification exam, any exam that you might be taking uh, or uh, certification uh, that you might be going for that has math on it, I can help you prepare to pass. If you homeschool, I can definitely homeschool, have a great homeschool math program. And then obviously... Um, hopefully you have notes, but if you don't have math notes, you need to start taking great math notes immediately. But in the meantime, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to uh, my notes in the description of this video, along with my math help program as well. Okay, so here is the problem. We want to go ahead and factor this. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. This is a polynomial, and you definitely will need to know how to factor uh, things like this. And this is a relatively you know, a little bit more challenging than your typical kind of factoring problems that you might encounter in algebra. However, you definitely need to know how to do something like this. And I'm going to show you the solution right now. So if you don't want to see it, go ahead and pause the video if you want to kind of toy around and play with this. I think that's always a good idea to try to use these as a little pop quiz, um, kind of test your understanding. But here comes the solution. Okay, so let me scroll down here. So here's our problem. We wanted to factor this, and here is our polynomial. And you can just see the solution right there. So if you want to pause the video, write that down, or just look at it, study it for a second. Some of you might learn better that way. Okay, and what am I doing? What is going on here? All right, so if this is sufficient enough for you, okay, you're like, okay, no, I got that. All right, here's the problem. Here's the answer key. But really, you know, if you think about it, all right, what I like to do, I like to make these videos, is what I'm showing you here is nothing more than you would get in like a math textbook, right? So here's the problem, here's a bunch of steps, and you know, you would read it. So, you know, you might think to yourself, why even have teachers, okay? Why just maybe just give everyone the book so they can read the book on algebra and uh, everyone will be happy. Well, because teachers explain things, right? Kind of bring to life and because people are not quite sure, students sometimes are not sure what's going on and they need a little bit more thorough explanation. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's what I'm going to do right now. So if you want to stick around for a couple more minutes, we'll talk about factoring in a little bit more detail. All right, so here we go. So we want to factor this polynomial. Now, what you're probably used to is factoring things like, you know, real easy stuff like 2x plus 6 or x squared minus 9 or, you know, trinomials x squared uh, plus 2x uh, plus 1. I have to think about whether this is even factorable or not. But you got trinomials, special factoring cases, things with the GCF. You, you know, you're used to factoring those type of things, and you should be pretty good at factoring those type of problems to handle something like this. But there's a technique that you need to know, and it's called group factoring, okay? Group factoring, and anytime you're factoring anything, you don't know if something is factorable, okay? If I said factor the number 10 or factor 10, you would be like, oh, yeah, I can factor that. That's 2 times 5. But if I said factor 17, you would be like, hmm, that's just 1 times 17. It's not, we know this is prime, okay? You could factor it, if, uh, but the only factor you have is 1. So this makes this a prime number, okay? This is factorable. This is kind of what we're thinking about here. But what I'm trying to really uh, emphasize is sometimes you will have a uh, polynomial that you cannot factor, that is basically prime. In other words, you can't do anything with it. You just don't know, and you're going to have to 
play around with these things. So if, when you look at this, you don't want to give up and be like, oh, there's nothing we can do. Well, you want to try group factoring. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique, and you want to um, uh, get into group factoring once you have completed and understand how to factor out the greatest common factor, the GCF, how to deal with trinomials, and understand your special factoring rules, all that kind of stuff. So you know, you master this, and then when you uh, tackle group factoring problems, you'll be able to kind of, you know, um, handle, you know, these more challenging problems some more smoothly, okay? All right, so let's talk about how to do this. Now, this guy, this is a pretty easy group factoring problem, but, you know, I'm talking about group factoring. So what do I mean? You know, what, you know, what does this mean, group? Well, you want to uh, create groups within your polynomials. So the way you do that is using parentheses. So if you look here, you want to just, we, we have this written in standard form, highest to lowest power. So we have some X's, but we have this number. So we can't handle this like a regular trinomial. So here, I can look at this as one group, and then I can look at this as a second group. And the way you want to define these groups is by parentheses. Okay, so parentheses, if you remember from your order of operations, brackets like this, little squiggly brackets, these are called grouping symbols. Okay, so I can use parentheses. Now, if you look here, when I put the parentheses in, I'm not changing the problem. Okay, I'm just I'm grouping this and I'm grouping this like so. Okay, so you wanna uh, create two groups and uh, then you wanna kind of start seeing um, uh, if you can kind of get some stuff in common. So the first way to approach this is once you have your two groups here, okay, factor out the greatest common factor and see where that takes you. Now you won't know exactly where this is gonna go, okay, until you kind of play around with it, but here you can see I have um, x cubed and x squared, so I can definitely take out some uh, an x squared here, and then here I can take out a uh, three. So you kind of should be able to recognize here in this polynomial that you can take out some greatest common factors. So let's take out those greatest common factors and see what we're left with. All right, so this first group, I could take out an x squared. All right, when I take out that x squared, I'm left with x minus 2. Now, just to double check that, I could go x squared times x. That's going to be x cubed. And x squared times this 2 here, that's negative 2x squared. So this gets back when I use apply the distributive property. So if you're ever unsure about, you know, factoring out the greatest common factor, just, you know, apply the distributive property. Make sure you get back to this term. Okay, or this group. And then over here, I can factor out a three, okay, because the three is the greatest common factor between these two terms. Now be careful here. This is a negative three, or right there, this is a negative three x. So I, this, I can factor out this negative three times this x times this is going to be negative two, because negative three times negative two is a positive six. So you got to be very, very careful with the signs. And what you're trying to look for when you're doing group factoring, is to end up with the uh, same binomial in your two separate groups. Okay, so here I have x minus 2 and x minus 2. That's excellent. Now, this uh, that's what you wanted, okay, because now I can simplify that because you're effectively going to be factoring out uh, this binomial, okay? And you're going to be left with x cubed minus 3. Okay, so that's going to be one binomial, x minus or x squared uh, minus three, and then the other binomial is gonna be x minus two. Now, if you, I know it's kind of confusing, but when you, the, when you multiply these two together, you can factor, this is basically like the GCF here, okay? So you could factor this out of, bo out of both of these terms, okay? All right, so this is an example of group factor, and here is the final answer. I'll try to do more of these problems on my YouTube channel, but the bottom line is this. Factoring is um, extremely important in algebra. Matter of fact, the better, off, the better you are in factoring, the better you're going to be at algebra. You're, if you're terrible at factoring, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be able to pass algebra. So you got to learn how to factor and you got to start with this stuff over here first. But uh, if you did get this problem totally right without even looking at the steps, then I must give you 
an excellent happy face with a nice mohawk, okay, an A plus and a 100% and a very, very good, okay, so, you know, this shows me that you have some factoring skills, again, factoring skills are kind of like not optional when it comes to algebra, okay, and the only way you're going to get better at this stuff is to practice, okay, you don't get overconfident by just doing one problem, be like, okay, I can handle all problems because I can do one problem. No, you got to practice. You know, it's a skill. Math is a skill, all right? And just like, you know, a sports, you know, playing sports like basketball, or baseball, the more you practice, the better you're going to get. Same thing in mathematics, all right? Don't, don't feel like you can just do a couple problems and get the answer right, then, you know, you're totally good to go. No, you got to put the work in if you truly, truly want to master this stuff. All right, so if this video was helpful in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on uh, YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics on my channel. My goal is to try to teach uh, math in a clear and understandable way. Too many people out there struggle in math where there's no need for them to do that. What you have to do is find a teacher that you like and understand, and hopefully I could be that teacher. That's why I post this content. I love teaching math, so if you're getting some uh, you know, usefulness out of my videos, then excellent. Please subscribe, follow my work, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.